إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد We continue our weekly classes reading in Kitab Al-Arba'in Nawawi The 40 Hadith of Al-Imam Al-Nawawi Rahmatullahi Alayhi And we are in the sixth hadith I'll read it inshallah in Arabic and then I'll explain it in English. عن أبي عبد الله النعمان ابن بشير رضي الله عنهما قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الحلال بين وإن الحرام بين وبينهما أمور مشتبهات لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس فمن اتقى الشبهات فقد استبرأ لدينه وعرضه ومن وقع في الشبهات وقع في الحرام كالراعي يرعى, يرعى حول الحما يوشك أن يرتع فيها ألا وإن لكل ملك حما ألا وإن حما الله محارمه ألا وإن في الجسد مضغة إذا صلحت صلح سائر الجسد وإذا فسدت فسد سائر الجسد ألا وهي القلب رواه البخاري ومسلم In this very, very important hadith that draws uh, some of the fundamentals of Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that halal is bayin, halal is clear, and haram is clear. وَبَيْنَهُمَا أُمُورٌ أُمُورٌ مُشْتَبِهَاتٍ And between them there are some matters that are unclear. Unclear. لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس. Many people don't know about. Then he said, فمن اتقى الشبهات فقد استبرأ لدينه وعرضه. And who, who refrains from these unclear matters, then he has preserved his religion and his honor. And who falls into these unclear matters, يعني commits them or falls into them, then he has fallen into haram. Karai, just like a shepherd, he is catching his, his sheep around al hima, hima sanctuary, you know, a preserved place, private place. Yushiku an fiha. He's about to trespass, he's about to get into this private preserved place. You know, he's going around it with his sheep. Yushiku an fiha. Then he said, Ala wa inna li kulli malikin hima. Every king has a sanctuary, has a place that is preserved. This is like an analogy, a metaphor. Then he said, Wa ala wa ala wa inna hima Allah maharimuhu. That's the sanctuary and things that are preserved that we should not come close to is maharimullah. Maharimullah means prohibitions that Allah has prohibited on us. We shouldn't come close to it. Then he said, there is a piece of flesh in the body. If it is sound and good, then your actions or your whole body will be sound and good. And if it is bad, evil, something bad in it, then your actions will be bad and evil and your body will be bad. Called it fasad. Fasad means expired or something that is off. Now, let me ask you brothers and sisters, if I give you a dish, I don't know, what do you like in food? Pizza? Masala dosa? Whatever dish you give you. I'll give you that dish and on it you'll see green bacteria. It's expired. Will you eat it? Of course not. Nobody will eat it, right? You're scared because it's health. You're going to harm yourself. But what if I give you a dish and there is nothing on it? And it looks okay. But two people come and tell you, by the way, this is off, it's expired. And two other people come and they say, no, no, it's okay. So now mix, right? Somebody tells you it's expired, somebody says it's not expired. Will you eat it? If you're really hungry, maybe. But if you you will not eat it. You will say, um, this is unclear, I don't know. Because I want to preserve his health, your health, right? Imagine this is your health, this is your body, and you will not risk. How about your religion? And the religion is our throne, our taj. You cannot risk and play around with religion. 
And subhanAllah, this, this hadith, many of the ulama, they say this is asl min usul al deen As a matter of fact, it is maybe perhaps one third of Islam. One third of Islam. And they called it uh, hadith babun fi al wara'. Babun fi al wara'. There is a term that's wara' and there's a term that's zuhd. Anybody can tell, say the difference between wara' and zuhd? What is wara'? Huh? Back? Oh, that's wara'. <laughs> wara' with an ain. <laughs> but nice. Uh... <laughs> huh? Wara', wara yani. <laughs> the wara'. The wara' in, in Arabic is a small boy. Wara' is. Paper? Okay, your guys are going drifting very away. So let's, let's come back to the deaths. <laughs> Kid, paper, back. <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> very far away. al <laughs> huwa what will, uh, what will harm you, what leaving what harms your akhirah. Wara is leaving what harms your akhirah. Yeah? As zuhd when we say this guy is Zahid, I think even in East Asia, India, Pakistan, we, you, you use that word, right? Zuhd. Zahid, no? We don't, okay, sorry. Anyways, Zuhd in Arabic meaning doing what be, or leaving what benefits your akhirah. Doing or leaving what benefits your akhirah. Yani from the Zuhd, some people maybe will not run after money. He doesn't, you know, priority, doesn't care about money too much. That's zuhd. Why? Because leaving it will benefit your akhirah. Wara is when you leave something for the sake of your, it's when you, uh, uh, sorry, when you leave something that will harm your akhirah. Yani if there is something that's ambiguous and you say, I'm not clear about this, what do you do? You leave it. For the what sake? For the akhirah. And this hadith is bab, أصل من أصول الورع. This hadith is a fundamental principle in ورع. In ورع. طيب. First of all, halal things. Halal things. Things that Allah has permitted to us. Are they a lot or little? What do you What do you think? Halal things. Are they a lot or شوية? They're little things that maybe two, three things Allah made halal for us. There's so many, numerous. If you put a, ta a table, you know, you put a line and you write what's halal and you write what's haram, the halal will be much, much more. Sahih? And the haram is little. طيب. The Prophet said, Al halal bayin. Halal is clear. We have a qaida in shara. Anything that is not an act of worship, worldly things, then it is by default. Halal or haram? Halal. Anything that is from the adat, not an act of worship. By default, it is halal. Except if there is a dalil, there is a proof that it is haram. And I maybe I gave this example in previous classes. So if I say al-khamr, khamr is halal or haram? Haram. Why? It intoxicates, but there's a dalil. We're talking about, there is a dalil. Allah said it's haram. Sah? Zina is haram or halal? Haram. Why? Because Allah said it's haram. Not because I just feel it's bad. No, we're talking about dalil here. Right? Riba is halal haram? Haram. Why? Allah said it's haram. So by default, if Allah didn't say it's haram, becomes haram? No. Halal. So al-asl fil umur al-hil wal jawaz. ما لم يأتي به الدليل Unless there is a dalil that makes it prohibited. طيب Now we understood haram and halal. Unclear matters is divided into many parts. The ulama have explained this issue of unclear matters. What exactly does it mean when we talk about unclear matters? First, we have things that are unclear in their occurrence, in their absence, or their existence. I'll give you an example. So, 
if I did ablution, wudu, and then between the ablution and the and the salah, I'm about to go to salah. Between the ablution, I did wudu, and then the salah. Between that, I was not sure. Did I go to the bathroom or no? I'm not sure. This is an unclear matter or a clear matter? Unclear, right? Now this is, I'm in an unclear matter. What do I do here? طيب. Can we apply this hadith? فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَات If you refrain from unclear matters, then you have preserved your religion and honor. What do you think? Should we apply this hadith or no? Yes? Okay, how do we apply it? Tell me. You redo the hadith, uh, the wudu? Uh, khata. Huh? Disbelieving? So you, you ignore that you did ablution, you repeat again. Hmm. Hmm. Remove the doubt and pray. Okay. Uh, the brother here said no. Khalas, I have a doubt. I work on the doubt. Yani meaning, I go do ablution again. I do wudu again. صح? The brother here said no. Don't do wudu again. Khalas. This doubt I ignore. He's correct. Why? Because we have two situations. In this situation, we have asl. Asl is what? Is that I did wudu, wudu. Because I know, I remember. صح? I am 100% sure that I did wudu. What is unclear is, did I go to the bathroom or no? صحيح? Now, in these situations, we call them the occurrence. Yani, did it happen or not happen? You go back to the asl. You go back to the asl. The asl is, I did wudu. Khalas, this, this doubt, I ignore. This hadith doesn't apply. What does it, what does apply here? وَإِنَّ الْحَقَّ وَإِنَّ الظَّنَّ لَا يُغْنِي عَنِ الْحَقِّ شَيْئًا Allah said that doubt does not replace haqq, truth or facts, clear things. And we'll come to this other hadith. دَعْ مَا يُرِيبُكْ إِلَى مَا لَا يُرِيبُكْ Leave what is doubtful to what is clear. Huh? Clear, yeah? So this is what we apply here. We apply that we go back to the asl. طيب. Then why do we apply this hadith? We apply it when it is a matter of halal and haram. The ruling is unclear. In the previous example, I didn't ask you about the ruling. I mean, I didn't tell you halal, haram. I told you, did, wudu, did going to the bathroom take place or no? This is the issue, right? So it is the occurrence of an act or the absence of an act. In the second matter that I'm about to tell you now is the ruling. Is it halal or haram? Now we apply al -wara'. Now we apply, leave it for the sake of your akhirah. Now we apply this hadith. That you have to tattaqi shubuhat. That you fear what is unclear. Questions after, by the way. I hope it's a small thing. Tell me. Okay, keep that question later, please. Keep that question for later. Yeah? Taib. <clears throat> so, so now we know what is halal and what is haram. And then there are some unclear matters that can be that you have to leave. Now, when, the, when it comes to unclear matters, there are two types. Here the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس. What does that mean? Many people don't know it. Yani the majority of people don't know about these matters, the unclear matters. Like who knows? The scholars. صح? Ahl al-ilm. They know them. And so, here, what do we do? If the Prophet said, there is shubha, and there are people, many people don't know it. So we have to, logically speaking, we have to go to the people who know it. Sahih? And this is something very, very important a lot of people have fallen into. 
الله عز وجل قال في القرآن هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات الله has revealed the Quran on you or Muhammad منه آيات محكمات يعني شو آيات محكمات they're locked they're clear محكمات then Allah said هن أم الكتاب they are the mother of the book they are the أصل the core of the Quran of the Deen يعني when I say قل هو الله أحد clear or unclear clear أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول وأول الأمر منكم clear or not clear clear no ambiguity in it then Allah says something وأخر متشابهات there are some ayat متشابهات it can mean this it can mean that it's not clear what does it mean then he, he, he warns us Allah is warning us then he says فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ يعني you have a problem in your heart just like the Prophet said your heart is not good فأما الذي في, الذين في قلوبهم زيغ what do they do فيتبعون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله they will follow what is doubtful they'll just keep on following the doubtful matters why ابتغاء الفتنة they want فتنة they want problems they want drama they want uh, you know these mysterious things they, want, they enjoy it وابتغاء تأويله and they just want to misinterpret things for the sake of just misinterpretation sometimes people have hawa temptation in their heart yeah so they go and discuss and get into ambiguous matters. And yeah, يعني so many of them today we see them. Especially people who are <laughs> online or in public. They always come up with the weirdest things and they just like, what did this guy just say, you know? And he makes you doubtful of your religion. He doesn't come and talk to you about proper things, clear things, things that are required by, uh, to know and understand. No, he'll come up with every weird thing that happens in the world. He will come and talk, talk about it. Talk about politics, talk about some weird thing that happened somewhere. Okay, talk about Tawheed, talk about Salah, talk about Wudu, talk about مثلا Sira is clear. No, I want to talk about the drama things, the controversial things. So here Allah is warning us against that. Then He said, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلُهُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا Allah." And nobody knows the interpretation of these ayat, doubtful or unclear ayat, not doubtful, unclear ayat, illa Allah. Then he said, وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ And the people of knowledge who are firm on the knowledge, they say, يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلٌّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا We believe in these things. It is from Allah. And in some qira'a, he, uh, it, it's interpreted as وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلُهُ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ That means nobody knows the unclear matters except for Allah and the people of knowledge. They know it. So this is a very, very important aspect. This actually completes each other. This ayah and this hadith are together. Are together. And like I said, halal, everything is halal. Alhamdulillah, that's by the mercy of Allah. Chicken is halal. Meat is halal, bread is halal. You name it. All the foods in the world are halal. What's haram? Meita and khinzir. Anything else is haram? And, oh, let's elaborate, also other things. And uh, uh, carnivores, they call it? Or uh, what do you call it? Animals who eat meat. Animals who eat. Can we eat a lion? Can we eat? No, we can't. Haram. Three things. What else is there? Anything else? Huh? Oh, نفسه اللي يعني animals which eat meat. Three things. Everything else is halal. But Subhanallah, the people like Allah said, who want shubuhat, they will always go to the ambiguous matters. They don't want haram and halal. They want to ambiguous ambiguity. طيب. So and haram, all is clear in the Quran. والله الحمد. All is clear in the Quran. والله الحمد. طيب. <coughs> Also, now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith said, فَمَنْ فَمَنْ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدْ اسْتَبْرَأَ وَمَنْ وَمَنْ وَقَعَ فِيهَا وَقَعَ فِي الْحَرَامِ يعني if you fall into ambiguous matters, unclear matters, خلاص it's 100% haram, the ulama, they interpret this in different, different interpretations. One is that you might fall into haram. وَمَنْ وَقَعَ فِيهَا وَقَعَ فِي الْحَرَامِ If you commit or do these ambiguous things, unclear things, you 
here this is the yani the unread word you might fall into haram you might fall into haram or it becomes a habit for you to keep doing uh, you know getting into ambiguous things ambiguous things what will happen to you statistically speaking possibility you'll fall into haram because they're ambiguous things so you might fall into haram another interpretation of this is that because you as a layman as a person who don't know or as a person who sees things that is unclear you didn't research and many of the people today this is the situation you don't ask you don't do research you just go do things and this is very problematic this is very problematic so uh, before you do anything as a muslim this is a rule as a muslim before you take any step that step look at it har halal or haram business uh, money marriage school whatever you do whatever you do ask understand this is halal or haram and today we're in the age of technology and it's not hard to get an answer for many of the things almost everything from the internet from the authentic sources not any website don't cherry pick don't go fatwa shopping you know i'll look for a sh for a fatwa that says it's halal no then you haven't f this uh, this doesn't apply to you then there is something else applies to you <laughs> then you are sahib fitna <laughs> then you are a person who is not honest with allah yeah and this is also a very very any severe thing so asking about something is extremely important also in this hadith tells us about a very important aspect in islam sadd al dharaa' sadd al dharaa' what does that mean sadd al dharaa' is refraining from whatever may lead you to haram wa hadha asl min al usul sadd al dharaa' is that anything that can lead you to haram you refrain from allah qala fil quran when he describes zina he didn't say don't don't do zina. He said, "Wala taqrabu zina. Inna hu kana fahisha wa saa sabila." Don't even come close to zina. So Allah didn't say don't do zina. Wala taznu. La. قال ولا تقرب الزنا. يعني even coming close to zina, don't don't do that. Like what looking, like what socializing, talking, like what mixing. In one hadith, one of the Sahaba. When the Prophet said, uh, Beware that you enter or mix with women. Then one of the Sahabas elaborating is asking, Hamu means what? Relatives, in laws, relatives. But they are not mahram. Yeah, but they're relatives. What did the Prophet say? He said, يعني, This is even more severe. Maut, يعني, death kind of elaborating or trying to tell him that that's even worse. Don't come close to them. Why? Dhari'a. Dhari'a to zina. Akhi, I am good, I am this. And this is the problem. I am I am pious person, I am a good person, I am protected, I'm... Don't say that. Sadd dhara' is an asl. From you don't know. You don't know what can happen. And wallahi, if you go to court or know somebody in court, he tells you about the stories that happen, Court is filled with these cases. You know, unlawful relationships with, with in-laws, with uh, uh, relatives, with things like that. Why? Because of this. Because you haven't, you haven't stayed away from shubuhat. This is very important. Said the Tayyib. Now, how much time do we have? Okay. Not much time, subhanAllah. Time flies. I had a lot of things to say. <laughs> now, when we talk about this shubuhat and staying away from shubuhat, and this is from the piety of a Muslim, that you preserve uh, your, your deen, your religion, and you preserve your honor. Tayyib, your religion we understood, that you don't fall into haram, sahih? Tayyib, your honor, no doubt, we live in a society, yani, people around you don't have mercy on you. You fall into something, they will, يعني, they will talk about you, they will uh, you know, d d uh, insult your reputation, this guy is a per bad person, this guy is this. And sometimes even, people will, ref will refrain from you. Sahih? If you are a person of kaba'ir, if you are a person of shubuhat, if you, people will say, I don't want to deal with you. 
Yeah, so you have to preserve also your honor. Preserving your honor by moving away from anything that is doubtful is also something that is that is uh, recommended and ordered by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then he gave us a beautiful analogy, alayhi salatu wasalam, like a shepherd. See a shepherd, and he has his sheep. His sheep is eating from all the ground in the in the in the open area. Then you are are seeking problems. Why? You go next to the, to the sanctuary. Go eat there. Go take your sheep here, there. Why are you coming next to the place that is haram, that is prohibited? He comes and he starts, the sheep will start eating from that place. So Allah, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is telling, if you come there, then yushiku an aw yarta'a fiha. Meaning that, why you're playing with fire? You might fall into that. The sheep is, they don't think sometimes, right? They don't, always they don't think, they're animals. But so they will go into that prohibited place. Go into haram. And this is how humans are. Don't think that, La, Allah is protecting me. I know my religion. I pray my five prayers. I'm not doing any haram. I'm, no way I will fall into haram. Don't ever say that. The Salaf, the Salaf, uh, radiallahu anhum, they used to be so scared of things like that. They were the masters of wara' after the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Yani, they used to say, Al-Qulub da'ifa. Hearts are weak. Washubah. Unclear, ambiguous matters. Khattafa. Khattafa means it will snatch you without even you know, knowing it. Ah, the Salaf, these are the people, the scholars, the biggest mountains in Islam, they're saying this. How about now? Do we live in a, pl in a, in a time of clarity or unclarity and, and ambiguity? We live in a time of ambiguity, you know this. Everything is unclear now. People can't even tell if this guy is a man or a woman. <laughs> people can't even say if this is Islam or not Islam. People can't say if... Hatta today, I, know, I don't know if you've seen this on, on, on the internet, they've been sending voices of scholars, but it's AI generated. It's AI generated. He says, I am the scholar so and so, but this is an AI generated sound voice. That's scary, man. This is unclear times. If this is enhanced in such a way that it is identical to the, to the sound of the scholar, what will happen? People will go astray. People go will get misguided. So definitely stay away from shubuhat. Shubuhat. And we are living in the time of shubuhat. Restrain from shubuhat. Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, in Madarij al-Salikin, said something beautiful. He warned the people from seven traps of the shaitan. Seven traps of the shaitan. He said the shaitan will not come to you and present you kufr and say, Yallah, reject Allah and come with me to the hellfire. How about that? Here's two tickets, VIP. You want to come? He's not going to do that. What is he going to do? First, he will present the big thing, of course. He's going to say kufr in an indirect way. If you don't accept it and he sees that, mashallah, this guy is yani, strong in his aqidah and his tawheed, you're not going to fall into kufr. What does he do? He's going to come down to a, a, a lower level. He's going to come and show bid'ah to you. He's going to spread bid'ah, you know, innovations, things that are not part of religion. And if he sees that like, you are sahib sunnah, sunnah, you are sahib sunnah, you are on the sunnah, you don't follow bid'ah, you're clear on this matter, what is he going to do? He's going to make you fall into minor sins. Yeah, this is minor sins, your salah will repent it. Yeah, and it becomes a habit. One time, two time, three time, four time, then you make it public, mujahara. Then... You become a habit on you. And if it becomes a habit on you, your iman is going to go low, 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 low. What's going to happen then? Then your ibadah, your acts of worship will be weaker and weaker and weaker. And then you fall into major sin. And then you just get pulled slowly, slowly. You might even fall into kufr. You might even fall into many things. Tayyib. If a person is no, he's very, mashallah, strong. And even minor sins, he's not doing. Sorry, major sins. Major sins first and then minor sins then he will come into making you fall into permissible things. Permissible things. How? You exaggerate in the permissible things, in mubahat. You exaggerate so much that you make it a priority in life. And once it's a priority in life, you start neglecting your, your obligatory acts and you getting closer to Allah. And we see this many times. This is a very, very strong trick of the shaitan. 
So first he might want to make you fall into kufr, then bid'a, then major sins, and if he cannot, then minor sins, then if he cannot, then mubahat, permissible things. I see today many people, in for example fitness, fitness, sports, gym, halal or haram, or mutashabih, <laughs> permissible. Tayyib, one guy goes into the gym and he starts working out and he becomes really so into it and you know, he's, he's so into it, becomes a priority in life. Then, then he makes it a priority in life, he makes it on top of everything or one of the top things in his life. Then for example, he says, Wallah, there's this new gym that's opening up soon in my neighborhood, but it's mixed gym. Too many girls and it's a mixed classes and all that. What's going to happen here? Haram, but this is a priority. I don't know. I love gymming. Yeah, I'll go, but I will al basar. I will close my ears and uh, my eyes, and I will go into the gym. Shwaya, 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 shwaya. He's not gonna, you know, lower his gaze. Shwaya, shwaya, shwaya. He'll get a girlfriend from there, and slowly he will fall into sin, step by step. Work. Many of us maybe are workaholics. Working is haram, halal, not haram. Maybe it's obligatory. صح? One guy is working, he's doing business, customers are coming, profit, whatever. Adhan, but I have this deal I have to finish. There's a report I have to finish. Oh, it's a meeting, it's a CEO meeting, I have to finish this. Tayyib, salah is going to finish, expire, time is going to go. Tayyib, no problem, I'll, play, I'll pray later. I'll do jam' with the other salah. Now you've made permissible things, make you fall into haram things. Tayyib, if this guy is, mashallah, iman is top, even permissible things, the shaitan cannot deal with that. He's not making him fall into haram. What happens? He will trick you into falling into sunnah and neglecting fard. You emphasize on something that is mustahab, but you leave the fard. Example, we see some people, for example, wallahi, they are very charitable. Kareem gives money for to poor people on that. Okay, your zakah. He doesn't pay zakah. <laughs> يعني خلي ولي. He's not really يعني bothered about zakah. Or some people, they will pray tahajjud. Or qiyam al-layl or, or witr. And they forget fajr. It doesn't work. See, the shaitan makes you fall into these traps. Last but not least, if you are, mashallah, top pious whatever person and he cannot even make you fall into that, he will send soldiers for you. To get you. Like what? Soldiers of humans. He'll make people come and try to attract you. Shayateen al-ins. Because khalas, he cannot directly make you, uh, you know, misguide you. He will send people to misguide you. A lady, work, CEO, maybe even your wife, maybe even your children. You don't know. You don't have to fight them, but just <laughs> stay away from them. Yeah? Stay away from that fitna. Yeah? So these are the, the seven traps of the shaitan it was mentioned in madarij as-salikin then subhanallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the end he concluded by talking about the heart talking about the heart and subhanallah as as i mentioned yani if you fill this heart with what is clear halal haram aqeedah everything is clear no doubt that your heart will, your heart will be sound but if you fill your heart with doubts what will happen to you? You'll be a very disturbed person. And wallahi, I tell you this and I share this yani, story with you. It happened to me many, many years ago. Before I even started seeking knowledge. Yani. I thought like every other kid, I'm a macho man and the whole ummah is waiting for me to come and make Islam victorious. And I was a jahil. I used to go back then, there was no social media, there was forums. You know forums? You know, internet. So I, I used to go because I love Islam so much, but I don't have any knowledge. What do I go? I go to atheist forums. And they're, you know, they're insulting Islam and all that. And I want to defend Islam. So I go and I start reading shubuhat. Doubtful matters, unclear matters. One of these shubuhat fell into my heart. And it was there for years. It really messed me up. Kept on thinking about it. You know when there's like something in your heart you cannot like go it's stuck and it's very disturbing what if this what if that i cannot understand this and the shaitan starts playing with your head 
You know, it's, it's, it takes you even to the, to the way of kufr. It takes you to many places in your head. You start seeing darkness. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, and of course, by the, by, all thanks also to, then to the, to the scholars and the mashayikh, they taught me about these things. And Alhamdulillah, I cleared it out. Today, many people, they go and seek shubuhat, seek mutashabihat. And this is wallahi a calamity. One of the reasons why our youth and our Muslims are falling into a lot of division, a lot of misconceptions, a lot of bid'ah, a lot of fights between Muslims, because we haven't caught the muhkam. We haven't uh, fixed first what is clear. Everybody's going after mutashabih. Is this guy Muslim or Kafir? Is this guy Mubtadi or not Mubtadi? Is this country Muslim or Kafir? What about that war over there? Did you know what happened? It was a conspiracy theory. Did you know that incident that happened in, in so and so country? And, and then just keep on going. Okay, Habibi, you know Ahkam al Salah? No. You know Juz Amma, Juz Amma, you know? No. Fatiha, maybe he doesn't know how to read. But you know Tawheed? What is Tawheed? What is Shirk? How? When do you fall into uh, Shirk? When do you fall into. No. And now you're talking about things. And he thinks that will, how are you going to apply these things? Yeah, and he once I even heard uh, Sheikh Al Fawzan, one of the big scholars of, of Sa Saudi. One guy called him, and you know he gets thousands of calls. Look at the silliness of some people. Yeah, and if you call him and he answers, you better make a very good yeah, he, reason for you to call him. Give him the, the best question that you have, because you might not get him again. Thousands of people from all over, over, over the world are calling him, trying to get a fatwa from this alim. One guy calls, Hello, uh, Sheikh Al-Fawzan, yes. Uh, I want to ask, ask is this so-and-so president? Is he Muslim or Kafir? <laughs> why, why are you asking this? What, what's is the, yani, who are you? What's going on? Why are you caring about him? Sheikh Al-Fawzan, what did he tell him? <laughs> it's none of your business. <laughs> it's none of your business if the guy is Muslim or Kafir. Because there's nothing that should be applied on this information. Nothing. Is Muslim, okay, now what? Is Kafir, now what? Nothing. And today also I want to also mention this is that now people, they do rulings and judge based on ambiguity. Based on, well I heard, I saw a picture, I saw some clip which is cropped, cut, you know, he said so and so, yeah this guy, not good. This guy, Kafir. This guy, he's a, a fasiq. This guy is whatever. This is shubuhat. All of it. Why do you want to fall into haram? Why do you want to destroy your honor? So, يعني, a Muslim should always fear Allah in such things and such matters. Muhammad How much time do we have? Nine minutes? Okay. Sheikh, your question. Okay. Okay, so so what's the asal in this situation? What is the default? You tell me. No. No, the doubt is you did wudu or no? No, no, no. See, now you're saying every time when I go to the masjid, I do wudu. Sah? One day you said, I went to the masjid, but I'm not sure if I did wudu. Sah? Yes. Now, what is the doubt? The doubt is that you did wudu or no? This is the doubt. But okay, so what is the asal? The asal is that you didn't do wudu. Khalas. So do wudu. Yes. Clear, yeah? Because you always see the doubt. If the doubt is wudu, then you are not wudu. If the doubt is, uh, I did, for example, pass gas or go to the bathroom, that's the doubt, then leave it. Yeah? Khalas, cancel that, and your wudu is okay. So it's different, opposite. Any other questions? Uh, before the questions, we uh, will do the prizes first. Yes, prizes. طيب. Name one... No, not one. It's too easy. Name three of the traps 
of the shaytan that was mentioned in Madar Jazalikin, uh, the uh, Ibn al-Qayyim. MashaAllah. New faces always. Huh? He will make you fall into? Yeah? Bid'a? Major sins and gave me one bonus. MashaAllah. Tayyib, here. This is your gift. Congratulations. <laughs> no clapping, guys. <laughs> We're not in an auditorium. <laughs> Tayyib. Second question, I have another gift. Uh, what should I say? Difficult, yeah, I should g give him a difficult one. I mentioned some of the scenarios of how do you fall when you fall into, into ambiguous matters. How is it that you fall into haram. I gave three scenarios. How many scenarios? Wait, I'm sorry. No, no, two. Two scenarios. So when you fall into uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? He said that وَمَنْ وَقَعَ فِي الشُّبُهَاتِ وَقَعَ فِي الْحَرَامِ If you fall into these unclear matters, you will fall into haram. Then I explained what does the Prophet mean with waqa'a uh, fil haram. He fell into haram. What does it mean? I gave you a couple of scenarios and interpretations to this. I said the ulama interpreted it in different ways. Huh? Can you tell me two ways I, I mentioned? If you say waqa'a fil haram, what does it mean? It's why tough. It's too tough. No, no. Did you understand the question? The Prophet said, If you fall into shubha, in the hadith said, You fell into haram. Clear? That waqa'a fil haram, I explained it. It has different scenarios. I explained more than one scenario. One, more than one interpretation. Name two of these scenarios. And two or two of these interpretations, what are they? What does it mean, waqa'a fil haram? Hmm? Yes. No. Yani, you're very close, but no. No, no, it's not it. Yes, sir. The sheep. Yes, now this is the analogy. But what does it mean? Okay, I'll give you one. I'll give you... Yes, tell me. Okay. Second. I'll give you one. I'll give you one and then you'll understand what I mean. We said that falling in doubt will make you fall into haram. I said it... One of the, uh, some of the ulama, they said that it might make you fall into haram, صح? I said, because you're doing it too much, that might make you fall into haram. What's the other one? Another reason for this. Why did the Prophet say, it might make you fall into haram? Uh, لا. I miss my said the dara'a. What? <laughs> let, me, let me change the question. I'll give you the answer and then I'll change the question. The, the answer is, I said, it can possibly be make you fall into haram. If you, uh, man, meaning that possibly it's shubha, it can be halal, it can be haram. So maybe you fell into haram, that's one. Then I said, man because you are falling into, it becomes a habit that you are uh, doing, committing too many shubuhat, there, you know, you're doing according to ambiguous matters you might fall into haram also, yeah? Then I said, because you didn't ask. It was unclear to you, and you didn't ask a scholar. You didn't say, you didn't ask a scholar, then of course, that is haram. Why didn't you ask a scholar? So I mentioned that. Tayyip, I want a dalil for sadd al You know what sadd al is? Sadd al is refraining from what may lead to haram. One dalil from the Quran or the Sunnah, about that matter. I mentioned more than one. Guli al-Hadith. Eh? Nussa, yalla. Ah.
ولا تقرب الزنا. That's that's the correct answer. The pro, uh, Allah said, "Do not come close to zina." عاد هو قال الآية أنت ما قلت لي الحديث. آه؟ إيه دليل صح كلهم دليل هذا دليل وأنت دليل. <laughs> طيب congratulations. آه؟ Divided outside. <laughs> Cut it in half and give it to. <laughs>